Judges chapter 8 Now the Ephraimites asked Gideon, Why have you treated us like this? Why didn't you call us when you went to fight Midian? And they challenged him vigorously. But he answered them, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes better than the full grape harvest of Abiezer? God gave Orab and Zeb, the Midianite leaders, into your hands. What was I able to do compared to you? At this, their resentment against him subsided. Gideon and his three hundred men, exhausted yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. He said to the men of Succoth, Give my troops some bread. They are worn out, and I am still pursuing Zeba and Zalmanah, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth said, Do you already have the hands of Zeba and Zalmanah in your possession? Why should we give bread to your troops? Then Gideon replied, Just for that, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zalmana into my hand, I will tear your flesh with desert thorns and briars. From there he went up to Peniel and made the same request of them. But they answered as the men of Succoth had. So he said to the men of Peniel, When I return in triumph, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmana were in Karkor with a force of about 15,000 men, all that were left of the armies of the eastern peoples. A 120,000 swordsmen had fallen. Gideon went up by the route of the nomads east of Nobah and Jogbaha and attacked the unsuspecting army. Zeba and Zalmanah, the two kings of Midian, fled, but he pursued them and captured them, routing their entire army. Gideon, son of Joash, then returned from the battle by the pass of Heres. He caught a young man of Succoth and questioned him, and the young man wrote down for him the names of the seventy-seven officials of Succoth, the elders of the town. Then Gideon came and said to the men of Succoth, Here are Zeba and Zalmanna, about whom you taunted me by saying, Do you already have the hands of Zeba and Zalmanna in your possession? Why should we give bread to your exhausted men? He took the elders of the town and taught the men of Succoth a lesson by punishing them with desert thorns and briars. He also pulled down the tower of Peniel and killed the men of the town. Then he asked Zeba and Zalmanna, What kind of men did you kill at Tabor? Men like you, they answered, each one with the bearing of a prince. Gideon replied, Those were my brothers, the sons of my own mother. As surely as the Lord lives, if you had spared their lives, I would not kill you. Turning to Jetha, his eldest son, he said, Kill them. But Jetha did not draw his sword, because he was only a boy and was afraid. Zeba and Zalmanna said, Come, do it yourself. As is the man, so is his strength. So Gideon stepped forward and killed them and took the ornaments off their camels' necks. The Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And he said, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from your share of the plunder. It was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, We'll be glad to give them. So they spread out a garment, and each of them threw a ring from his plunder onto it. The weight of the gold rings he asked for came to seventeen hundred shekels, not counting the ornaments, the pendants, and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian or the chains that were on their camels' necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Thus Midian was subdued before the Israelites and did not raise its head again. During Gideon's lifetime, the land had peace for forty years. Jerob Baal, son of Joash, went back home to live. 
He had seventy sons of his own, for he had many wives. His concubine, who lived in Shechem, also bore him a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon, son of Joash, died at a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of his father Joash in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They set up Baal Beerith as their god, and did not remember the Lord their god, who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the family of Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, in spite of all the good things he had done for them. Judges chapter 9 Abimelech, son of Jerubbaal, went to his mother's brothers in Shechem and said to them and to all his mother's clan, Ask all the citizens of Shechem which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jerubbaal's sons rule over you, or just one man. Remember, I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shechem, they were inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is related to us. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of baal Berith, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless scoundrels who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Ophrah, and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem to crown Abimelech king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. One day the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, Should I give up my oil, by which both gods and humans are honoured, to hold sway over the trees? Next, the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, Should I give up my fruit so good and sweet, to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and humans, to hold sway over the trees? Finally, all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. The thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, then let fire come out of the thorn bush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. Have you acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech king? Have you been fair to Jerubbaal and his family? Have you treated him as he deserves? Remember that my father fought for you and risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family. You have murdered his seventy sons on a single stone and have made Abimelech the son of his female slave, king over the citizens of Shechem because he is related to you. So have you acted honorably and in good faith towards Zerubbabel and his family today? If you have, may Abimelech be your joy and may you be his too. But if you have not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and consume Abimelech. Then Jotham fled, escaping to Beer, and he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. After Abimelech had governed Israel for three years, God stirred up animosity between Abimelech and the citizens of Shechem, so that they acted treacherously against Abimelech. God did this in order that the crime against Jerobaal's seventy sons, the shedding of their blood, might be avenged on their brother Abimelech and on the citizens of Shechem, who had helped him murder his brothers. 
In opposition to him, these citizens of Shechem set men on the hilltops to ambush and rob everyone who passed by, and this was reported to Abimelech. Now Gaal, son of Ebed, moved with his clan into Shechem, and its citizens put their confidence in him. After they had gone out into the fields and gathered the grapes and trodden them, they held a festival in the temple of their god. While they were eating and drinking, they cursed Abimelech. Then Gaal, son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and why should we Shechemites be subject to him? Isn't he Jerobaal's son, and isn't Zebal his deputy? Serve the family of Hamor, Shechem's father. Why should we serve Abimelech? If only this people were under my command, then I would get rid of him. I would say to Abimelech, Call out your whole army. When Sebal, the governor of the city, heard what Gael, son of Ebed, said, he was very angry. Under cover, he sent messengers to Abimelech, saying, Gael, son of Ebed, and his clan have come to Shechem, and are stirring up the city against you. Now then, during the night, you and your men should come and lie in wait in the fields. In the morning at sunrise, advance against the city. When Gael and his men come out against you, seize the opportunity to attack them. So Abimelech and all his troops set out by night and took up concealed positions near Shechem in four companies. Now Gael, son of Ebed, had gone out and was standing at the entrance of the city gate, just as Abimelech and his troops came out from their hiding place. When Gael saw them, he said to Zebal, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. Zebal replied, You mistake the shadows of the mountains for men. But Gael spoke up again, Look, people are coming down from the central hill, and a company is coming from the direction of the diviner's tree. Then Zebal said to him, Where is your big talk now, you who said, Who is Abimelech, that we should be subject to him? Aren't these the men you ridiculed? Go out and fight them. So Gaal led out the citizens of Shechem and fought Abimelech. Abimelech chased him all the way to the entrance of the gate, and many were killed as they fled. Then Abimelech stayed in Arumah, and Zebal drove Gaal and his clan out of Shechem. The next day the people of Shechem went out to the fields, and this was reported to Abimelech. So he took his men, divided them into three companies, and set an ambush in the fields. When he saw the people coming out of the city, he rose to attack them. Abimelech and the companies with him rushed forwards to a position at the entrance of the city gate. Then two companies attacked those in the fields and struck them down. All that day Abimelech pressed his attack against the city until he had captured it and killed its people. Then he destroyed the city and scattered salt over it. On hearing this, the citizens in the tower of Shechem went into the stronghold of the temple of el Birith. When Abimelech heard that they had assembled there, he and all his men went up Mount Zalmon. He took an axe and cut off some branches, which he lifted to his shoulders. He ordered the men with him, Quick, do what you have seen me do. So all the men cut branches and followed Abimelech. They piled them against the stronghold, and set it on fire with the people still inside. So all the people in the tower of Shechem, about a thousand men and women, also died. Next Abimelech went to Thebes, and besieged it and captured it. Inside the city, however, was a strong tower to which all the men and women, all the people of the city, had fled. They had locked themselves in and climbed up on the tower roof. Abimelech went to the tower and attacked it. But as he approached the entrance to the tower to set it on fire, a woman dropped an upper millstone on his head and cracked his skull. Hurriedly he called to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and kill me, so that they can't say a woman killed him. So his servant ran him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw that Abimelech was dead, they went home.
Thus God repaid the wickedness that Abimelech had done to his father by murdering his seventy brothers. God also made the people of Shechem pay for all their wickedness. The curse of Jotham, son of Jerab Baal, came on them. Judges chapter 10 After the time of Abimelech, a man of Issachar named Tola, son of Pua, the son of Dodo, rose to save Israel. He lived in Shamir, in the hill country of Ephraim. He led Israel for twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried in Shamir. He was followed by Jair of Gilead, who led Israel for twenty-two years. He had thirty sons who rode thirty donkeys. They controlled thirty towns in Gilead, which to this day are called Havoth Jair. When Jair died, he was buried in Canaan. Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, and the gods of Aram, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. He sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, who that year shattered and crushed them. For eighteen years they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilead, the land of the Amorites. The Ammonites also crossed the Jordan to fight against Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. Israel was in great distress. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord, We have sinned against you, forsaking our God and serving the Baals. The Lord replied, When the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried to me for help, did I not save you from their hands? But you have forsaken me and served other gods, so I will no longer save you. Go and cry out to the gods you have chosen. Let them save you when you are in trouble. But the Israelites said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do with us whatever you think best, but please rescue us now. Then they got rid of the foreign gods among them and served the Lord, and he could bear Israel's misery no longer. When the Ammonites were called to arms and camped in Gilead, the Israelites assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead said to each other, Whoever will take the lead in attacking the Ammonites will be head over all who live in Gilead. Luke chapter 18 Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice, and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? To some who were confident of their own righteousness, and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, 
rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I've kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me! Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Psalm 87 He has founded his city on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too, and Tyre along with Cush, and will say, This one was born in Zion. Indeed of Zion it will be said, This one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, This one was born in Zion. As they make music they will sing, all my fountains are in you. Proverbs chapter 25
These are more proverbs of Solomon compiled by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. As the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. Remove the dross from the silver, and a silversmith can produce a vessel. Remove wicked officials from the king's presence, and his throne will be established through righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence, and do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, Come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. What you have seen with your eyes do not bring hastily to court. For what will you do in the end if your neighbor puts you to shame? If you take your neighbor to court, do not betray another's confidence, or the one who hears it may shame you, and the charge against you will stand. Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a ruling rightly given. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is the rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. Like a snow-cooled drink at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to the one who sends him. He refreshes the spirit of his master. Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of gifts never given. Through patience a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. If you find honey, eat just enough. Too much of it and you will vomit. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house, too much of you, and they will hate you. Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is one who gives false testimony against a neighbor. Like a broken tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in a time of trouble. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on a wound, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Like a north wind that brings unexpected rain is a sly tongue, which provokes a horrified look. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well are the righteous who give way to the wicked. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable to search out matters that are too deep. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control.